This is Twit. I guess we should talk about uh, German's article uh, first because he agrees that there probably will be uh, this new uh, Qualcomm uh, chip in the new iPhone for this year, which we think will be the iPhone I think, 13. I that think will give Wong you satellite. Chi made a huge mistake. Yeah, Woming Chi said that it yeah. will work on Spectrum owned by Global Star. Well, uh, some have said your new iPhone will work with satellite networks just as well as with cellular networks. I think he yada yada is, it. Right. German is saying it's like, going to be for emergencies when you don't have, which would make a lot of sense for Apple to kind of slowly roll this out. Um, but I think he yada yada a whole paragraph out of his thing because he has like this one part that everyone glommed onto that said Apple, you know, Qualcomm is working on the N53 band uh, and they're working with Global Star on this. And then there's a period and I see a black cat walk across his whole article. And then he says, and this is all satellite technology. And Global Star actually does like several different things. They're uh, a huge company. They do like hundreds of different yeah. things, agriculture. But they have... They have a terrestrial technology and a celestial technology. The terrestrial technology is band 53, which they managed to get, and they have an LTE version and a 5G version. And it's often used as like a carrier or aggregate signal for 5G in general. And, I th and there's been rumors for a, a year now that Apple is going to incorporate that as a way of making their 5G package better. And then Global Star also does the satellite stuff <laughs> that includes the ability to make transponder-like features for emergency messaging and for um, disaster uh, signaling. And yes, it is, it is easy to believe that Qualcomm would do a special version of an N60 modem that preloads band 53 in, for Apple, because everyone else is getting it with the with the um, X65 modem, but that is completely separate from the ability to receive, let alone send satellite signals, which is probably right. two iPhones from now. Stock market believed the rumor. Global Star stock went up 64 percent <laughs> yesterday. It'll be here eventually. Uh, <laughs> um, well, that's the stock market is always weird because if you're if you're an analyst, excuse me, if you're working in the stock market, a lot of it is not what reality is, but how are people going to yeah. react to panicking about what the reality might be? Exactly. So, and yeah, I mean, this is a, this is both an interesting rumor and a non-interesting set of analysis by most people that I've seen so far, uh, Renee, Renee excluded, of course, uh, because the fact that it might have bandwidth that is associated with an LEO satellite does not mean a satellite phone. It could mean that this is a, this is a, this is a band that, as Renee said, is very useful for packaging a lot of different uh, wireless services together, a lot of different access uh, together. Uh, it's possible that it is f in preparation for a service that is being planned that has not even been announced yet and might not even be available for the next couple of years. But it makes sense to say, well, if we're, we we don't want uh, our entire phone lineup to be obsoleted uh, the the day that we ship it, let's have there there are a whole bunch of phones that have uh, uh, the ability to receive FM radio signals because that's the chip they bought and uh, they just don't activate it so there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of wait and see re regarding this garman's garman's cold water on this i think seems to me to be the accurate uh, take on it yeah uh he said that uh apple's plan is initially more limited in scope according to the person person he talked to with the focus on helping consumers handle crisis scenarios of course, Apple has no uh, comment. The first component, German says, is dubbed emergency message via satellite. Users can text emergency services and contacts over a satellite network where there's no cell signal available. You know, I have, we're in the middle of massive fires uh, here in, uh, in the West, yeah. including in Tahoe. And, of course, that would be hugely valuable. Uh, uh, it's kind of like those spot watches where you're uh, you're hiking, you're away from yes. uh, yeah. and, anything. And, and there's a there's a lot of parts of California that if you go up, especially if you're driving up the one that you just don't have any cell service at all. You know, you, your phone can tell you where you are; it just doesn't know where that is. Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, so the the thing is, is that GPS information and and being able to send that GPS information back out. And we've seen things like this with you know Garmin's and so on and so forth that you take when you're in you know kind of really in the out you know, in the, in the outer edges of the wilderness where it's constantly being able to update um, where you're at so that you, people that you know can find you if you suddenly stop communicating. So, um, so I think that there's a lot of times when we think about hikers or other folks that have been lost and everyone's looking for them uh, with this kind of service, as long as you keep the battery going, people will know where you are. You're at theoretically. Yeah. Um, so I think GPS is on those. Some of the most. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's, yeah, so. it's really 
I, I think uh, Renee, I, I, I did see your, I think one of your videos on this that I, I really, really liked how succinctly oh, you. you put it. That that every phone has a GPS uh, GPS radio in it, but it's easy to receive a satellite signal. It is very difficult to transmit a signal back yeah. up to a satellite. And if you want one of those, yeah. you're going to have to be accepted with, hey, why do I have this big rubber thumb stuck to the top of my beautiful, elegant iPhone Pro? Well, that's because that's because you wanted a phone that could talk to a satellite, even in emergency services. So this this is why I'm really, really not putting any bets on the table for this one, because the antenna problem is so difficult to solve, even if you choose a very, very narrow set of uh, rules, a set of features uh, for any kind of a satellite service uh, to uh, to be providing that. I mean, you could you could think of, well, maybe it's there so that if you want to stick this into a sled that provides a better external antenna, then it could actually activate that way and be a very, very inexpensive add on device. But then you would say the people that would actually use this sort of stuff, why not uh, put all the electronics into that sled and just use the iPhone as a UI? Or why not uh, buy a bespoke device that is designed specifically for emergency services like that? So it's 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 very very hard to predict what the what this kind of technology could practically be used for without a massive redesign of what we expect an iPhone to look like. Thanks to uh, Scooter X in our chat room. Here's a list from REI, the camping uh, store, of yeah. the, the the different kinds of kind of emergency locators. There's PLBs, which are personal locator beacons. They're not for texting. They just send a signal along yeah. with your location saying, I'm in trouble. You can't send text. You can't do anything like that. That, by the way, look at the size of these. I mean, it clearly doesn't need to yes. be some fancy Dan thing. Yeah. When you get to the satellite messengers, though, see those antennas? Uh, yep. they're like a Trio 680. Yeah, 650. yeah, they're big yeah. clunky things. These allow you two-way texting. Uh, same idea. So uh, yeah. German's rumor is oddly concrete. <laughs> he says the feature <laughs> will be integrated into the messages app as a third protocol alongside SMS and iMessage and appear with gray message bubbles instead of green or blue. The second feature will be a tool to report major emergencies such as plane crashes, sinking ships. I hope I don't ever have to use red this. So you can see the emergency. Yeah, and be using like, oh, I missed that message. Yeah. It gray. was gray. It was gray. interface gray like Alex's walls. Yeah. Um, can we just make it red? The texting via satellite tool is codenamed Stewie inside Apple. Again, oddly uh, oh. specific. Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> I've been whipped. We'll restrict messages to a shorter length. The texts will automatically push through to an emergency contacts phone, even if the do not disturb setting is on. One planned design will let a user send the message by typing emergency SOS, where they would usually input a contact name. That seems like an awful lot to type in an emergency. Yeah. Um, now, he also points contact out... Contact name, Scooter. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Scooter X emergency SOS. <laughs> He also says, and the most important thing is, these are things Apple is looking at, but unclear whether they would ship it. Yeah, I think Quo just conflated yeah. Band 53, which is something that they could ship today with the satellite messaging, which is something that's going to take years. And they both happen to work with Global Star, so it, you know, it's under understandable yeah. but not forgivable that we conflate those things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it is the case that Global Star said it had signed an agreement with an unidentified party to develop a new service. So that's why people in the stock market are going... <laughs> and they have a yeah. press release out saying that Qualcomm is integrating them into the X65 yeah. modem for yeah. Band 53. And so again, yeah. it's and easy it, to think they'll put them in X65. And, and it also, we should also point out that this makes Qualcomm look very, very good at a time when both both when a lot of major manufacturers are very much eyeing developing their own modem chips and not becoming develop, uh, dependent on Qualcomm at all. So any piece of any leak that happens to get out of Qualcomm to say, oh, well, gosh, we hope that people don't find out that we're providing fundamental technology that Apple is thinking about putting into every single iPhone ever for the next two or three years, because it would, it would send our stock price shooting up high, 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 and we wouldn't want that to happen, would we? The most important paragraph, of course, in, uh, in German's piece says, and though the next iPhone could have the hardware needed for satellite communications. The features are unlikely to be ready before next year, said another person who has not to be identified because the plans aren't yet public. The features could also change or be scrapped before they're released. Mark's actually got that, uh, I think he's got that attached to a single keystroke uh, on, his, <laughs> on his computer it, it now. It reads like Bloomberg to me. Like You can always tell the article what Mark wrote and what Bloomberg yeah, yeah. wrote. Yeah. But it is, the, it is always the case that it, what you hear is what Apple's thinking about, but not necessarily what Apple's going to release. Yeah.
And Apple hadn't. But it's also the, late. It, like Apple's decided this stuff. Like they they plan their phones two years out. It's like the rumors surface like six months later. Like echoes of decisions Apple has already right. made. Sometimes. Well, and they've already put hardware. They they often have put hardware in place that the software can't support or even looks at yet. Yeah. Um, so that they can utilize yeah. it later. So can it, you it could give, be what's an example of something like that? Um, oh, the U1 you know, chip the, for a long time. Yeah, they, you didn't use UWB initially. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 